Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dana and on this channel we are all about SMS Beauty, which is skincare, makeup, sunscreen. We've been doing a lot of the third one lately, so we're gonna keep it going. Actually, that's kind of, I mean, that's my one true love. Well, not really, I have lots of loves. But this channel is really, you know, heavily into skincare and sunscreen. So I do a lot of sunscreen reviews. If that's something that's interesting to you, definitely subscribe, like this video, all those things. Share it with your friends, I don't even care. <laughs> anyway, so today we're doing another sunscreen review and this is of the brand Shiseido. They have quite a few sunscreens out. I've tried now, I guess three of them. I don't have any interest in trying a few of them because they, I was just looking on their website and one is a hundred dollars and I'm just like, like is anything worth a hundred dollars? I mean, yes, I guess some things are, but I don't feel like a sunscreen is and I haven't heard such rave things. I actually haven't heard anything about it. So I'm not gonna try it. But what I'm trying today are the two newer ones that they have. This is the Fresh Moisture Hyaluronic Acid and this is the Oil Free Hyaluronic Acid. So these are pretty new, I think within like the last month or so. And I definitely wanted to try both of them because I think they're supposed to appeal obviously to like different skin types. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna tell you all about them. I'm gonna apply them on either side of my face just so you can really see the difference. Because I do think, especially like the packaging and the ingredients and everything, that they're meant to be like, you pick one or the other depending on your skin type. So I think a side-by-side -side comparison will be the most helpful. So let's jump in. Okay, the first one we have is the Fresh Moisture Hyaluronic Acid. This is the first one that came out, the first one I picked up, and I actually got to pick up this, I, well, I thought it was the smaller size, but I think this one is. So this is a pretty standard size, 50 milliliters or 1.7 fluid ounces. Retails for $38, which does seem expensive, but Shiseido is also like a high-end luxury brand, and for them, it's not too terribly priced. <laughs> and it's an SPF of 42, which is an interesting number, but I'm okay with it. Um, and then it's meant to be best for dry or like combo slash, I guess, normal skin, but I don't think it's meant for oily skin whatsoever. So this is a chemical or organic sunscreen, and the filters in it are avobenzone 2%, homosalate 10%, octosalate 5%, and octocrylene 5%. Pretty standard amounts. Okay, what else does it say about it? It says it's a lightweight daily hydrating SPF. It's also supposed to hydrate for 12 hours. Now, a lot of the Shiseido brands do say that, and especially like some of the higher end brands, they do have a lot of money that they can use for research and development. And so it's meant to be like, even after you rinse it off, because you might not be wearing your sunscreen for 12 hours, the hyaluronic acid is supposed to be kind of helping you long-term. The finish is supposed to be dewy or radiant, which I would agree with. And then in terms of ingredients, obviously hyaluronic acid is like in the name of it, so that's in there. Pearl light powder. It's supposed to help reduce or reflect red light and basically help with your skin tone and dullness. Lastly, there's no cast to this. This is a chemical sunscreen. It's really not meant to have a cast, but if it does, I always say like get a new chemical sunscreen. This is not waterproof and it is pretty fragranced. I would say a lot of the high-end like luxury brands can be fragranced. And sometimes they, because of the fragrance and the ingredients that they use to have that fragrance, it can irritate certain people's skin. So the last thing I wanted to say about this is this can double as your moisturizer. I used this one of the first times when I went down to Florida and it wasn't like one of those hot, humid Florida days, but it was still warm out. Not, maybe not the best choice. Um, so unless your skin is super dry, I would definitely say like, just kind of keep an eye on when you're using it because it can be a little much at certain times. Okay, now the other one we have is the oil-free hyaluronic acid, broad spectrum SPF 42. So this retails for $10 more. So this is $48 for 50 milliliters or I got the smaller size. So this is the 30 milliliter size and this retails for 35. They're kind of the same price, but this one is smaller. So this is a little bit more expensive in general. This is also SPF 42, but instead of a pure chemical or organic sunscreen, this is a hybrid sunscreen. So the filters in it, we have Ensulazole 1%, Homosalate 15%, Octosalate 5%, and Zinc Oxide, which is your mineral or inorganic filter we have at a whopping 15.5%. So those are like a lot of filters in my opinion, especially with a 15.5% of zinc oxide, which kind of tells me something. I mean, I've already tried it, but 
it tells me that this one is going to be more likely to have a white cast just because of that amount and especially because it's not tinted at all. So the difference between them, this one is more meant for oily or combination skin, dry, normal kind of combo, oily for sure. This one is also lightweight. They're both pretty lightweight. I don't feel like they're heavy sunscreens and it is oil free. So another bonus. The finish on it, well, I'm just gonna put it on and let you see because I think that's important. But in terms of the other ingredients, we have spirulina essence and hyaluronic acid, of course. And then there are quite a few different extracts in it. So they both have pretty good ingredient lists. If you are sensitive to anything, especially different extracts or like essential oils or fragrance, I would definitely go and look and see what they are. All right, enough jibber jabber. Let's apply it to my face. Okie dokie. So I think that highlights the difference. <laughs> um, but they're both pretty great for what they are. Like this one, I can definitely see just wearing as a moisturizer and a sunscreen. Very easy to apply. Just goes on, of course, like just beautifully. I mean, Shiseido, their sunscreens and a lot of their products are just absolutely luxurious and wonderful. You know, the other one that I love, the Ultimate Sun Protector, it comes in the blue bottle. It goes on even more like a dream, but that one is absolutely wonderful because it's waterproof. It's just a spectacular sunscreen. And this is very similar, but a little bit more of your traditional like cream type sunscreen. Now, this one always surprises me. It's very important when you use anything that is, I mean, this has like a little bit of a tint to it, but it's still pretty much like white-ish. So if you're using something that's a mineral sunscreen or a hybrid sunscreen that doesn't have a big tint to it, it's very, very important to go in as thinly and with like small amounts as you can and layer it. So I see so many people, even people that know sunscreen and like review it all the time, they just like put it, like glob it into their hand and they go like that and like rub it all over their face. And they're like, why do I have a cast? Now, some sunscreens are gonna give you a cast no matter what. And of course, if you have a deeper skin tone, it's just kind of inevitable for a lot of the people. But I really, really want people to try doing it in thinner, smaller layers. Because this one, if I just like apply it to my face, I do have a cast and I don't even have a super deep skin tone. But if I apply it like I did, like super thin and then rub it in and then apply more, there's no cast. I'm not saying and I, I've gotten like roasted for this because people with deeper skin tones are like, it just doesn't work for us. I get it. I totally freaking get it. Some sunscreens don't and that is terrible and I wish all sunscreens worked for all people. But I also want people to try like a different method because if you do the same thing and you're not getting the results, like maybe try a different method. So please don't come at me. I'm just offering a suggestion. It's just merely a suggestion. Try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, it's great. You know, then you have one more sunscreen you can use. But I do love both of these sunscreens. I think they really operate for different skin types, which is great. Obviously a little bit more oily people, you have the oil control, you don't have any oil in it. And on this side, you're really getting like a nice glow to your sunscreen, kind of like a moisturizer and sunscreen in one. So 
it's not like one is better than the other. It just really depends on what you're looking for. I do wonder what they would come out with. I think they probably do have a mineral one. I just haven't tried it. I'm not always interested in trying all mineral sunscreens because unless it's so revolutionary, I'm like, eh, I've tried that before. <laughs> but maybe they do. So let me know if they do. I mean, let me know if you want to see one of those and I will definitely review that for you. But I'm just gonna end it there. I think they're both absolutely wonderful. Would I repurchase either of them? Probably not this one, just because I think you can get this in a lot of other sunscreens, like a glowy, moisturizing, uh, white cast-free sunscreen. Pretty easy. This one, I actually think is more unique in the sense that it's one of the only hybrid sunscreens that I really do like. I don't love hybrids at all. So I would say that this one is more unique, but it's, I think a smaller amount of people might be attracted to it. That's it. So. I'm gonna end it there. I hope you enjoyed it guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.